What is reduced rank LDA?、Uh, I want to explain that、uh, LDA naturally leads to a dimension reduction、uh, of this classification problem. Let's right now assume that sigma is an identity matrix. Then、um, you can look at the discriminant function for LDA. Now it takes this form. The first term basically is the distance from the point x to the case center,、uh, mu k, the ordinary L two distance because sigma is identity now, and then minus two log pi k, which is the、uh, the prior weights.、Um, So the discriminant function,、uh, the part relevant to x, is just the distance of x to each of the mu k's. And、um, since two points determine a one-dimensional line, three points determine a plane, and k class centers and、um, determines actually a k minus one-dimensional and、uh, subspace.、Uh, well, we need to be careful here. And、um, every subspace should pass pa- should pass through the origin. Um, well, we can just simply assume the center of the average of this mu case is origin, because all we care is the relative distance of those points. So we can always move the origin to the center of this mu case, and then you're going to find out that we can replace the first term in the original p-dimensional space by a square distance in that lower dimensional k minus one dimensional and subspace. Then LDA naturally leads to a dimension reduction from original dimension p to k minus one. For example,、uh, let's consider the special case where、uh, k is equal to two. So it's a binary classification problem, and the original dimension p is two, and there are two centers, and the data clouds look like a, a sphere shaped because the covariance matrix is identity. Now you can see that although the data are、uh, in the two-dimensional space, we should be able to、uh, do a classification by projecting all the data points to that black line, and then just、uh, look, check how cl- which centers are closer to, and then make our decision there. So there is a natural way you can reduce the dimension from the original p、uh, to k minus one. In this extreme case, it's just one dimension.、Uh, next, let's mathematically prove that. And LDA naturally leads to a dimension reduction from p to k minus one.、Uh, without loss of generality, we're going to assume the center, the mean of the k centers, is actually the origin zero, and because we all we care is the relative distance among points, so we can always move the origin to mu bar without affecting any of the、uh, distance or any statements. Then the k vectors mu one until mu k, and each one is a p-dimensional vector. They actually form a k minus one dimensional、uh, subspace. Why? Because the k centers,、uh, k vectors, and、uh, some of them is zero, and、um, because of this assumption, so there are, there are some redundancy. They only form k minus one dimensional subspace. I mean, at most k minus one,、um, instead of a k-dimensional subspace. Uh, let's denote that subspace by、um, letter a, and then for any vector in the original p-dimensional space, we can always、uh, write x as a summation of two vectors. One is x one, which is from the space a. Another is a green x two, which is from the orthogon- from the space orthogonal to a.、Um, for example, how we can get this decomposition x one x two, and that's easy. We can just run a regression of x against this design matrix, which is p by k minus one. So we can and the, my r x one just the fitted vector, and which is equal to the projection matrix times x, and x two will be the residual vector, and they're orthogonal to each other. And because the orthogonality of x one x two, um. Any norm of a vector in the original p-dimensional space can be decomposed as the sum of the individual norm of x one and x two, and the reason is that if when you expand this、uh, term, you can find out all the quadratic term、um, is zero because the two vectors are orthogonal to each other. And then let's look at the square distance between a point x to center mu k. And x can be decomposed x as x one, x two, 
where x1 is the projection of x onto A, and x2 is the projection of x onto A orthogonal. And similarly, we can do the decomposition for mu k. And then the projection of mu k onto this space A just will be mu k itself, because mu k lies in this subspace. That also means the projection of mu k to the orthogonal space will be zero. So we can just, uh, th this equality is trivial. We can just uh, rewrite whatever inside the double bar as this one plus this one. And there are two vectors. One lies in A, another lies in the orthogonal space of A. So they are orthogonal to each other. And then the norm square of sum is equal to sum of the two norm squares. So this is the square distance between x1 and mu k. And there are points in that k minus one dimensional subspace. And plus something, it doesn't depend on k, it's a constant. So we know that when we are evaluating the um, discriminant function dk, we can ignore uh, that constant term. In other words, when we are evaluating the di discriminant function dk, and we can project the x into a low dimensional subspace A and evaluate that quadratic uh, distance in that low dimensional subspace and something else. In other words, we can operate our LDA on this um, low dimensional and k minus one dimensional subspace. And the result should be exactly the same as we operating LDA in the original p-dimensional space. Now, um, all our derivation so far is based on the assumption that the covariance matrix is identity. But if the covariance matrix is not identity, and for example, let's look at this case where you can see um, the contour plot of the data clouds um, is sort of a, a tilted, is ellipsoid. Then the conclusion actually stays the same. In this, for this particular case, we can find out the um, running LDA in the original two-dimensional space would be the same as running LDA um, on this one-dimensional black line. So we have to project our data onto that one-dimensional black line and run our one-dimensional LDA. Uh, the only thing different from our previous discussion is when we are projecting data to that black line, we actually have to first transform our data to make them have a contour plot, not an ellipsoid, but a ball. What we're doing just normalization. Uh, remember how we scale a one-dimensional variable to have a unit variance? We will just multiply that variable by one divided by the square root of variance. Okay, so this is what we would do in the one-dimensional space. In multi-dimensional space, we don't have a, a number variance. We have a um, covariance matrix sigma. So we can do something very similar. We're going to multiply our vector by sigma to the power uh, it's like one over square root of sigma, but sigma is a matrix, so it's sigma to the power minus a half. Um, it actually takes this form. If you are familiar with singular value decomposition, you will understand um, this sort of a one over square root of this commercial matrix should look like that. Um, so uh, to summarize, um, for LDA, we can always run LDA in a low dimensional space. Uh, if sigma uh, is not identity, then we have to do our projection. Before we do our project and um, projecting everything to a k-dimensional subspace, we have to first scale our vec uh, x to have the unit variance and then do our projection. So here's a summarize of this um, reduced rank LDA. Um, uh, by the way, I threw a lot of a uh, matrix expression here just to make things rigorous, but feel free to ignore them. Just the, the intuition is just to understand that in LDA, all we care is some kind of distance to the K centers. And K center, that actually can be computed by projecting data to a K minus one dimensional subspace because K centers determine a system of only um, K minus one and dimension. So um, this is why when we run LDA, we could actually run it in a lower dimensional uh, subspace instead of the original p-dimensional space. In LDA, we, when we do, first we do the training, we uh, take n training data points, and we output the mix and weight pi k, the group center mu k, and the shared commerce matrix sigma. 
And then when we form our prediction for every test point X star, and also all the output we get from our training stage, we first um, compute the transformation we need, which is an I call it a matrix, and then we could calculate some kind of projection involving um, and you know the a and also those centered group means, and then we just reduce our data from x star, which is p dimensional, to a lower dimensional x tilde star, and then just operate and calculate our discriminant function for um, k from one to capital K, and then prediction ways the k-value which minimizes discriminant function. So we just discussed reduced rank LDA, and that means when our dimension p is bigger than k, k is the number of classes, and for LDA, we can project our data onto a k-mass one-dimensional space and, and then operate out LDA. For example, um, for binary classification, k is equal to 2. That means we can just project data to a one-dimension and and we should be able to learn a classification rule there. Uh, you're going to see that the same subspace will also arise in a supervised dimension reduction method called FDA, although FDA is motivated from a slightly different aspect. And I do want to um, point out that the uh, each of those k mass one dimension we learned from LDA each of them is actually a linear combination of all the original p-dimension space. So uh, overfitting could occur when p is really large. You're going to find out, for example, when p is really large, and you can see a very good separation on just uh, the k-mass one-dimensional uh, 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 space. Like you project your data to that direction you learned through LDA, which only k-mass one of them, and you project your training data there, and you can see the data are well separated, um, but you won't see the same result uh, on the test data. So consider this toy example where we have six observations. Three are from class one and three are from class zero. And, and assume the we also have six features for those observations. You can think about this matrix, six by six, and each row uh, corresponds to the measurement of the six feature for that corresponding and uh, data point. Um, you can easily uh, learn a re regression, uh, learn a, a vector, or which is basically the same as the dimension beta, such that um, this black matrix, almost the same as the design matrix in, in regression, x times beta is exactly equal to uh, the label 1 and 0. Then what does that mean? That means if for this, each of the observations, six of them, if you project them to that direction determined by beta, and in that case, uh, the projection is computed by proportional to the inner product between every row and beta, and you're going to find out for the six observation, if you project them to the beta dimension, then the two classes are perfectly separated. If you are from class 1, your projected value is 1. And if you are um, from class 0, your projected value will be 0. Um, but this is just because of overfitting, because we have 6 observations and we have 6 coefficients. So you can get them perfectly separated on the training data, but you wouldn't expect the same result um, to hold on the test data. Uh, 